I think any black man worth his salt is ambivalent about what's going on in Louisville, Kentucky today. On one hand, we're happy that people are coming from all over the world to settle, celebrate Muhammad Ali. On the other hand, you see incredible examples of capitalism, vulgar careerism, commercialization, political pimping, a lot of the things that Ali fought against. But what Ali was in the 60s was really a brother who had courage, who had conviction, who had talent, and was able to stand up against a, a system. Because understand, a deformed system always produces deformed human beings. And out of that deformation came Ali, standing up for what was right. Like Thurgood Marshall said, you do what's right and you wait for the law to catch up. Ali was doing what was right and was waiting for the world to catch up. And he was looking back at his people and say, look, look at me. I'm standing up to these people. I'm speaking my mind. I'm a free black man in America, and I'm still here. You can be too. And then you see the more silent he became because of his affliction, the more they loved him. The quieter he was, the louder their affection for him could become. And so you see that today, and you see this forgetting, and we can't forget. You juxtapose Ali against the greatest athlete of the next generation, Michael Jordan. And you see the antithesis of Ali's politics. When Harvey Gantt was running against a dyed-in-the-wool racist Jesse Helms, and they reached out to Jordan for help, Jordan's response was, Republicans buy sneakers too. That's anti-Ali. That's not what he's about. And most of our athletes these days, because we understand, this country is all about entertainment. And even in the midst of its vile racism, deformation, and inhumanity, there's always a particular place carved out for black entertainers and athletes. And the question is, what you gonna do with that? And so athletes these days aspire to be Jordan, not Ali. These people come out here and say they loved Ali, but they wouldn't live like Ali. So that's the contradiction. That's why we're ambivalent. That's what this brother was all about. Much love to him and much condemnation to the cowards who will pimp his legacy, but never would have stood with him when he was in trouble. What would be your one, like, one of your, what would be the most memorable thing you can remember about Ali? I mean, like, one or two things, like. The stood, most, the most memorable out. thing I remember about Ali, you know, and I wasn't old enough, because remember, this started when Ali went into exile, it was in 67, I was born in 67. And I remember that press conference when people were coming to him saying, you say you're the people's champion, but you ain't behaving like the people's champion now because you won't accept this draft. And when Ali stood before them and said, basically, you my opposer, not these people halfway around the world that they never did nothing to me. I mean, the truth in that, man, the piercing justice of that, I mean, the clarity of that, the courage of that, that's what I remember most about Ali, more than him defeating any other opponent. I mean, defeating that racism, defeating that fear, defeating that cowardice, that's Ali's greatest legacy. That's what I remember. This country loves people, you know, and especially the majority population of this country loves black people who make them comfortable. Ali didn't make them comfortable. I guarantee you right now, the most comfortable that a whole lot of people in this country are with Ali is today, because he's dead and can't open his mouth anymore. But for young black folk, for any black folk, especially black men, I would say that Ali's message to all of us, for real, is be a man. Be a man. Don't be a coward. Don't be one of these people going around talking about you like to work behind the scenes. Don't be one of those people talking about you work and make backroom deals. Don't be one of those people every time somebody asks you to do something, you say, oh, I would, but I got too much to lose. Be a man, not a coward. Be committed to something greater than yourself. That's what Ali was all about. And if you say you loved Ali, but you, you know, don't live like Ali, don't lay your rhetorical hands on him. Exactly what I mean. Good? Yeah. I'm